Hi guys, today we are going to review Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming is the second reboot of Spider-Man film series. We have Mark Webb Spider-Man Teen Walkout. So this is the second reboot that we see and the third iteration of Spider-Man in film series. And this movie marks Spider-Man that he's officially part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And his debut was Captain America Civil War, which I made a review on that movie and the Amazing Spider-Man 2 as video game counterpart, which you can check down in the description below. So without any delays, let's begin the plot. The plot begins after the events of Captain America Civil War, Spider-Man is under the guidance of Iron Man oh, oh, and his objective is, he, is that he is trying to get the recognition and the attention of Tony Stark in order for him to become a full-fledged adventurer. While in the south of the New York, something sinister is happening and that the Vulture will get what he wants. And that's pretty much about the plot of the movie. The plot of the movie is decent, also a bit cliche, but it's decent. The good thing that I like about this movie is that we don't see an Uncle Ben's backstory since we've seen it from Sam Raimi's movie and also Mark Webb, so we are very familiar on Spider-Man's backstory. And thankfully, the director didn't put a flashback. And I prefer it this way. And the other thing that I like about the movie is that Spider-Man does a lot of mistakes. Which makes sense since teenagers are tending to do plenty of mistakes. And some of them, not all of them, some of them are learning from them. And, and they become better and better. And Spider-Man does mis a lot of mistakes. And he improves. And this is by far one of the best portrayals in Spider-Man since he looks, he, since the actor looks like a teenager and acts like a teenager. And I have to say, props to that. And Bolto is a pretty awesome villain. And, 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 the, and the energy that he pulls is awesome. Ned's character, he's a mix of bad, uh, he's a mix of, mix of bags. In, in the case that it is necessary, he helps Spider-Man. In some other cases, you kind of say he's a bit of a annoying character. Like he's trying to reveal Peter Parker's identity just to help Peter Parker, but that's pretty stupid because he that if people learn about Peter Parker that he's Spider-Man, there's gonna be a lot of trouble. Anyway, Lee's character, she was, how can I say, very unnecessary. And I know that Hollywood is always obsessed with Black Triangle, it does feel at all. I like Sam Raimi's and Mark Webb. They nailed the part, especially Mark Webb, and nailed the part of Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy, and Sam Raimi did a, a good job at Spider-Man and Mary Jane. And in this movie, it didn't really need to have a romance at all. You could have easily cut uh, Liz Carter out, and nothing would have changed. I know she's a character in Spider-Man comics, but her appearance in this movie mm, didn't really help at all. And Tony Stark, he's a very good character. He's just an extended cameo and a good mentor of on Peter Parker. Since Peter Parker is he he's a young version of Iron Man, so it does make a lot of sense that Tony Stark is the one to guide him and to teach him what what it is to be a superhero. And, it, uh, and the movie does follow a bit of a cliché that we come to know in Marvel Cinematic uh, Universe movies. Play of action, hero's journey, beginning, middle and end that you come to know, and some nice spectacular explosion and good fight sequence. Let's talk about the actors. The actors were incredible, all of them, especially Tom Holland and Walter who is none other than Michael Keaton. But before that, let's go to talk about Tom Holland. Tom Holland nails a Spider-Man. 
He's not the level of Tobey Maguire, but he definitely surpasses Andrew Garfield. If he gets better and better, he will definitely surpass Tobey Maguire. He looks and acts like a teenager, and he nails it. He's pretty good at it, and I'm looking forward for more appearance starring as Spider-Man in the near future. And Michael Keaton. I can't believe I see a DC actor and especially the actor who played Batman in the Batman 1989. Oh man, who would have thought to see the actor who played Batman, which I was when I was as a kid, and he fights Spider-Man. Awesome. And he does a pretty spectacular job at playing Vulture. And he's by far one of the best aspects in the entire movie. He nails it. So how about the characters? Well, the characters in this movie are... Mm, mm. The main characters are do develop a lot, while the other characters are just here just for the decoration. And the one thing that I didn't like is that one character, which if you read the comic books, and I'm not going to spoil who is that character, is important, but the character is there just for the comedic purpose and just to say I'm here and we don't know that until the end of the movie and that character reveals the name and it came out of nowhere why could they just say that this is a character an important character and stick with that character oh well the music was mm, meh for the most part I, I do uh, like more on Sam Raimi's trilogy soundtrack. This one is very cliche and nothing memorable. It's just here. The length of the movie, it could have been uh, 15 to 20 minutes short, but it's serviceable at best. The fight scenes are typical in Marvel Cinematic Universe. There wasn't any memorable strong battle that you will say, wow, this is incredible, it's very typical. Well, only the fight when Spider-Man fights the Volto is actually pretty good. And we also see Stanley cameo as usual. So, yeah guys, all in all, the movie was pretty good, although not as good as the two movies that Sam Raimi has directed, Spider-Man 1 and 2, is definitely better than Spider-Man 3 and of course superior than the amazing Spider-Man movies. And to be honest, I'm looking forward to more Spider-Man movies starring Tom Holland. He, he did his job pretty well and the others, and I hope to see more character development in the other characters as well. And things will be incredible. So, with that in the days, guys, this movie gets a 7.9 out of 10. Watch this movie. You won't be disappointed. So yes, guys, thanks for watching this review. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. And have a good day.